five principles that we talked about, right? Now let's kind of get right into the topic, uh, into the depth of the pillars for each one and we'll kill the onion on each one of them uh, to the next two or three sessions, right? But, but today let's focus on the first one. And, and, and in fact, the, the first three ones. First is movement. What are you selling? At the end of this presentation, somebody said call to action, right? That's tied back to sales. So what is sales, by the way? What is the definition of sales? I am exchanging something of value to with you, and you're some you're giving me something of value back to me. That's what a sales guy does. I mean, if I'm selling soaps to you, I will give you a soap, and you will give me five dollars, which means I am now richer by five dollars, and you are now going to have a great bath starting tomorrow because of my soap. So something has changed in this exchange, and that change is what we mean by sales. Sales is all about movement. What is the before and after situation is what we are measuring at the end of the presentation. The bigger the delta between the before and after, the more awesome your presentation was, the more effective the presentation was. Now, don't think that sales always means that somebody will agree to buy that soap from you for $5. The answer may be no. After listening to your entire story, they may say the answer is no, I don't agree. I'm not going to approve this headcount. I'm not going to give you half a million dollars. I'm not going to do whatever you're asking me to do. That is still an awesome presentation. Even though you did not succeed in the goal. Why? Because the before and after is now still changed. Before that person was open to at least listening to you and, and, and see if he wants to agree. Now he has changed his mind. And he disagrees with you, right? Which is also a movement. If the before and after can be positive, the before and after can be so-called negative. But the point is, now why is that good for you? Now you know what the objections are with this person. Now you know why he's not convinced, which means that the next person that you go to now, you're more equipped to handle the objections. So hence, this is actually good news for you. Even though you got rejected, so-called in your first one, uh, you could still have been an awesome storyteller, right? So, so keep this perspective. Movement is very important for you to decide what is my before and after state that I want to induce at the end of my 10 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, two hours, whatever that may be. Second important pillar, uh, by the way, so I'll, I'll take a pause. Everybody clear on this? When I say it's a sales job, you know, you know exactly what I mean? I'm not asking you to become a salesperson starting tomorrow. That's not the intent, right? But you need to learn sales skills as it pertains to this area because otherwise you will not be able to become uh, an awesome storyteller because you're not selling, you're not even sure what you're selling. Uh, and so you need to kind of uh, know, know what that is. Okay, make sense? Straightforward? Second, personas. Who is important? We talked a little bit about this in your, in your questions that you guys uh, we're asking, right? There are four things about the persona. Knowledge level, belief level, maturity level, attitude level. So you have to actually analyze every single person in this room, reading the room we talked about in four dimensions, right? And we'll talk a little bit about this. Third, story, the structure of the story. We talked about this 60-20-20 rule. And depending on type A or type B, you have to choose that story. That's the third pillar of an awesome storytelling uh, you know, session. And fourth is your visual appeal. Straightforward, requires no explanation. Uh, yet, we'll spend a lot more time. Fonts, colors. Uh, which colors induce what mood? A lot of you thought blue is blue. Well, it turns out there are 8 million types of blues, right? And there's this one color, by the way, which I'm going to ask you as a trivia question, but let me ask you this now. Uh, so, so you can ask Uncle Google and phone a friend and do whatever else that you have to do to win this contest. But here's the question. There's this one color that when you see that color, your appetite goes down. Scientifically proven. Scientifically proven. Physiologically proven that when you look at this color, your appetite goes down. Now, first of all, you may say, well, why is that relevant, Pinkesh, in, in, in our conversation? First of all, what, is, what the hell is this even mean? What if I tell you this is a $3 trillion you know, research? 
three trillion dollar research is dependent on this answer. Can anybody tell me why it's so important question to, to research and find an answer to which color reduces appetite? Food packaging. The three trillion dollar problem is called obesity. And there are 200 such businesses who sell you Weight Watcher products, who will sell you gym equipment, who will sell you organic food to reduce, who will sell you Ayurvedic pills to reduce your uh, weight by six kilos and so on and so forth, right? If you knew the answer to this, just by using a color, if you give me food in this plate, I'm automatically losing four pounds. Now that's brilliant, isn't it? So, uh, what, so color, all I'm trying to say is that colors are an important element. And I know some of you are like me when, you know, 18 years ago or 16 years ago as an engineer, think, well, colors, really? I, I'm an IIT Kharagpur gold medalist. I'm an MIT Stanford graduate and I do real stuff. I don't care about colors. I used to think that way, by the way, uh, as an engineer. And uh, turns out that I was wrong. So before you think like that, or if you're already thinking like that, let me tell you, you're wrong. And you need to start paying attention to some of these things, subtle things that make your presentation visually appealing, right? Fonts, same thing. And then finally is your delivery. Very, very important. In fact, 70% of our communication is body language. I think everybody knows that on this call, right? Which means while I can do a great job on data and factoids and statistics and colors and fonts and grids and layouts and all of that. If I don't deliver this in an engaging way with my voice, my body language, my, my overall uh, you know, executive presence, I'm gonna fail. I may fail to create that impact, right? You may still get it away, get it, get it done. If it's a technical presentation, all they wanted was to see your Excel table. You put that up on the screen. And if that's all you wanted, well, great. But not all presentations are going to be like that. And certainly you at a leadership level as you grow up, you are gonna to have to perform much more than just showing a table and making a decision, right? You have to move people. You have to kind of create that movement. And that movement, the important piece is delivery. Right. So those are the five fundamental pillars. Uh, you know, that's your five kind of ingredients to make an awesome presentation. That's it. Everything else is just nice to have now. If you master these five, you're good.